Thank you for tuning in to the television ministry of Clay's Mill Baptist Church. Join us as we share our passion for soul winning, spiritual growth, and revival in our state and nation. And now, Pastor Jeff Fugit. Well, good evening and welcome to the program tonight. Thank you so much for watching. I trust that you're doing well and enjoying the goodness of the Lord. You know, even in this sin-cursed world, living in a body that is getting closer to death by the day, and all of the difficulties around us, it's still good to be a child of the King. It is still good to know that God, our Heavenly Father, is still on the throne, and He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I thank you so much for watching the program tonight. And if you would, take just a moment to text a friend and let them know that Brother Fugit and his family are on television. As I've traveled across the country, I've met many, many folks that watch our program through the Facebook Live uh, app, and I'm thankful for those that, that do, those of you that do. And if I could ask you to share the program, you can multiply uh, the number of times that folks will see and hear the television program, and I do appreciate that. And of course, the many, many folks that watch our television program on WLJC-TV, uh, we appreciate uh, that uh, large uh, television audience. If you do not have a church to attend, we'd love to invite you to come and be with us here at the Clays Mill Baptist Church. We're located at 1220 Brannan Road. For many, many years, our church was located on Clays Mill Road, thus the name Clays Mill Baptist Church, and our church was founded in my birth year of 1964. Dr. Lewis Arnold was the founder of our church. We have five pastors through the years. I've been here as the pastor since May 1991. The Lord has been so mighty good to us, and I'm thankful for the privilege that we have uh, to serve the Lord as a church family, a growing church family. And as you know, uh, our church moved to Brandon Road. Uh, we built new buildings, and we're excited about these uh, new buildings as tools, opportunities to preach the Word of God. There's never been a day uh, like uh, today as far as the need for the call to revival a call to a spiritual awakening, and folks having a church where they can come and be a part of that revival, a part of that spiritual awakening. Sunday school begins at 9.30 in the morning. There are classes for every age and for every grade. Many folks, when they think of Sunday school, they think of a program for children. But we have adult Sunday school classes for every age and group. We have several adult classes beginning with the large auditorium class that I teach on Sunday mornings at 9.30. And then we have classes for young married couples. We have uh, Sunday school classes for college and career age. Uh, we have Bible study classes for uh, uh, all ages uh, of adults and just several, several Sunday school classes, not just for children, but also for adults. We also have a well-staffed and a professional uh, nursery department, and we take care of our children, we take care of our babies in a first-class manner, and I so appreciate our nursery director and all of the folks that work in the nursery program. Church begins at 10.30 in the morning. You'll find our church to be an old-fashioned church. You'll find our church, and by that I mean we still sing from the hymn book. Uh, we still sing the old-fashioned hymns. We don't sing uh, any of the contemporary uh, music with all of the bands and all of the different things like that, uh, but just an old-fashioned uh, church. Uh, we often say church the way it used to be. We preach from the King James Bible, and all of our classes use uh, the King James Bible and all of their study and all of their teaching and in all of the preaching here uh, at our church. Then Sunday evening service is just an old-time revival meeting. We have a shouting good time on Sunday night. We have lots of tremendous singing as we have many wonderful singing groups in our church. And I'm thankful for every part from our choir director 
to our musicians, to those that uh, are a part of uh, duets, uh, trios, quartets, ensembles, and all of that. We also have an exciting teen department here at our church. We have a growing and a very active teen department. Some of our finest servants, our teenagers, they enjoy uh, fun activities, but our teenagers are very much a part of the work of our church. They help take care of the camera crews for our, our church services. They take, help take care of the PA system. They help in uh, working in the bus ministry. They help in cleaning the church. Our teenagers learn to be servants here at our church. In fact, they're planning uh, a missions trip now and looking forward to that missions trip. So it's an exciting uh, department for our teenagers. Wednesday night is Bible study time, and I take a, uh, a theme uh, or I take a subject, and I teach what the Bible has to say about that. Sometimes I teach on prophecy, sometimes the subject of eschatology, sometimes subjects like family, how to rear children, how to build a happy marriage, what the Bible says about various issues that we deal with in life. But it is a Bible study for everyone to come to. It begins at 7 o'clock on Wednesday evening. Visitors, the community, everyone is welcome to attend the Bible study. It begins at 7 o'clock, and we have a time of singing, a time of prayer for those that are in need. And then I typically start teaching between 7.25 and 7.30 on Wednesday evening, and I'm usually always finished by five minutes after 8.00. I respect those that uh, work and work late hours, and I'm very appreciative of our faithfulness to church, and I want to make sure that you're able uh, to schedule that knowing what the time is of start and finish. Our conferences, uh, those, those services are always just a little bit longer, but we plan for that. But you'll find that uh, uh, Clays Mill Baptist Church follows the schedule, and uh, we have a very uh, enjoyable uh, service and order of service uh, that is helpful to every person, every age person, and every family. So I would invite you to come and be a part of the services here at Clays Mill Baptist Church. Our address again is 1220 Brannan Road. Here's our first song I believe you'll enjoy this evening. When with the Savior we enter the glory land, won't it be wonderful there? Ended the troubles and cares of the story land, won't it be wonderful there? Won't it be wonderful there? Wonderful there? Having no burdens to bear over there. Joyously singing with heart bells all ringing, oh, won't it be wonderful there? Walking and talking with Christ the supernal one, won't it be wonderful there? Praising, adoring the matchless eternal one, won't it be wonderful there? Won't it be wonderful, wonderful there? Having no burdens to bear over there. Joyously singing with heart bells all ringing. Oh, won't it be wonderful there? Won't it be wonderful, wonderful there? Having no burdens to bear over there. Joyously singing with heart bells all ringing. Oh, won't it be wonderful there? Oh, won't it be wonderful there? I'm preaching tonight from the book of 2 Samuel in chapter 5. I love the story of this chapter for just its worth as a story. It's a story of victory of God's people over the enemy of God's people. I love it for that reason. Second of all, I love it because it is a reminder of our faith in God, the importance of our faith in God, a reminder of the importance of our time in prayer and seeking the face of the Lord. But it's also a part of a theme that we find throughout the Word of God uh, that tells us to wait on the Lord. Now, the word wait is not a sit in a lazy chair or sit in a lounge chair or 
uh, wait six months, wait a year. It's not that kind of a wait, but it's a theme of waiting on the Lord. And you find that instruction from the beginning to the end. And that waiting on the Lord is simply a continual dependence on him. And so I want to preach tonight on the subject of when David fought against the Philistines and they came from behind the mulberry trees. I'm going to read the passage and it's just four verses and I, I love the wording of this and you'll know why here in just a few minutes. But let me begin to read. The Bible says, And the Philistines came up yet again and spread themselves in the valleys in the valley of Rephaim. And when David inquired of the Lord, he said, Thou shalt not go up, but fetch a compass behind them. Now, I like that phrase, fetch a compass. Doesn't that sound like a southern phrase? I preach all over the country recently. I was preaching up north, and I preached from this passage of Scripture, and I read that phrase, fetch a compass. I said, doesn't that sound like a southerner? Of course, that's how we learned. That's how we learned how to talk and how to speak, and that's our vocabulary. The Word of God. That's why we use those great words like "fetch." And here he says, "I want you to fetch a compass." And uh, but anyway, that's beside the sermon. Doesn't have anything to do with it, other than I like that phrase. He said, "Fetch a compass behind them." He said, "Find out where they are. Find out what direction they're facing. Find out what direction they're heading, and I want you to go around behind them." Then he says, "And come." upon them over against the mulberry trees and let it be when thou uh, when thou hearest the sound of a going in the top of the mulberry trees that then shall thou, thou shalt bestir thyself for then shall the Lord go out before thee to smite the host of the Philistines and David did so as the Lord had commanded him and smote the Philistines from Geba until thou come to Gezer. I preach from this passage of scripture in two or three different manners, but I want to give you a message tonight that will encourage us in this matter of a continual battle against Satan and how to have victory in our lives in a continual manner. First of all, I want to point out what the Bible says in verse number 22. The Bible says, and the Philistines came yet again. Now, the Philistines were the perennial enemies of the, uh, uh, of the Israelites, and they were constantly fighting against them. If you recall, when David was just a lad, he wasn't old enough to be a part of Israel's army. He was helping his father tend the sheep, and one day, uh, Jesse, the father of David, said, David, I want you to take some food uh, to your brothers that are in battle, and uh, I want you to get a report and let me know how the battle's going. And so he packed up in whatever manner they did and uh, got the food uh, together, and uh, David makes his way down to where the battle is or where the battle is supposed to be, food in hand, to get a report of how the battle's going. And when he gets there, he finds out that there's no battle going on at all but there is a champion fighter of the Philistines by the name of Goliath. Now, Goliath is a champion fighter. He's not only a champion fighter, he is a giant. And the Bible tells us the details of how big he was, how tall he was, some uh, nearly nine feet tall. And it tells us how heavy his spear was and how heavy his, his shield was. And, and uh, David goes down and he finds that his brothers, along with the army of Israel, uh, they're actually in hiding, and not only in hiding, uh, they're in fear. And David hears that Goliath cursing the people of God. He curses, uh, Goliath curses God. He curses uh, Israel's army and says they're weak and uh, they, uh, they're afraid and he's mocking them and he's laughing at them and he's actually offering them a deal. He said, you send your best man out here to fight against me and if he defeats me, uh, then the Philistines will serve Israel. And then uh, he said, but if I defeat him, uh, Israel will, will serve the Philistines. And so King Saul is there, and everybody's just in the hiding and conversation trying to figure out what they're going to do. 
When David hears the cursing and swearing of the giant, David says, Who is this uncircumcised Philistine uh, that he should defy the armies of the living God? Uh, And then David says one of my favorite statements of the Old Testament. uh, David said, Is there not a cause? He said, Fellas, this is more than a battle. Uh, This is more than a meeting. Uh, This is more uh, than just a fight. This is a cause. Uh, We're fighting for the cause uh, of our God, our Creator. God in heaven. Now his brothers, they make fun of David and they say, David, who's taking care of those sheep back home? And uh, you're a naughty uh, young man and you just came down here uh, to get involved in things you have no business in. You're not old enough. You're not big enough. You're not trained. You're not able. Uh, Why don't you go back home? But David wouldn't take that for an answer and David let them know, I'm going to go fight against this uh, Philistine champion, against this giant by the name of Goliath. And so uh, as the story unfolds, you find he has a meeting with King Saul. And King Saul actually offers his armor uh, to young David. And uh, it, it, it seems as you read the passage that David actually, he tries it on. He sees how it fits him and he finds that it's too big. And he said, I have not proved this. And uh, so he took the armor of Saul off and uh, he said, I'll take this uh, slingshot. Uh, now, no doubt David spending the many hours and days and nights uh, with the sheep, uh, he had learned to use the slingshot uh, fairly well. And, of course, uh, you can imagine, here's this little kid. Uh, here's this fellow not even old enough to be in the army, this teenager. And he's got his slingshot, and he goes down by the uh, brook, and he picks up five smooth stones, and he uh, puts them in his pouch there, and he goes over to face Goliath. Well, Goliath starts laughing at him. And uh, Goliath said, do you think I'm a dog? He said, did you come over here with that slingshot to run a dog off? And uh, he said, I want you to know uh, that I am uh, Goliath and I'm a champion fighter. And David said, I want you to know I'm not coming to you in the strength of, of my flesh, but I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. He said, all of Israel's going to know, all of Israel's going to know, not who I, David, am. All of Israel's going to know uh, who our God in heaven is. And so as the story unfolds, David takes the slingshot, he puts a stone in the slingshot, he whirls it around and around, and it lets the old stone go, he hits the a giant between the uh, eyes and the forehead, and he knocks him down, he knocks him out, and David goes and he takes the sword of Goliath and he cuts Goliath's head off. And uh, you know the story. Well, they began to not only praise David, they started writing songs about that event. Uh, Sort of like uh, ballads uh, that we would write in the day about soldiers and uh, those that had won big battles. And it would seem that the Philistines were defeated. They had made that deal. You kill us or you kill our champion fighter and we'll serve you. And that's exactly what happened. But But the Philistines didn't keep their word. And the devil never does, and he never stops fighting. And I wish today I could say, I want to tell you how to prevent fighting against the devil. I'm going to tell you how to knock him out once and for all, uh, but I can't do it. The devil's going to fight until he's bound and cast into the lake of fire. And that's what hell was prepared for, the devil and his angels. And I wish I could tell you that more battles are not going to come, but just as sure as we've enjoyed a victory in the past few days or the past few weeks, another battle is going to come. The Bible says here, and the Philistines, that came uh, yet again. Now, sometimes I wish I wasn't always in a fight. I wish I wasn't always in a battle. One time as a younger preacher, I was uh, spending time with the Lord, and I was just telling God, Lord, it seemed like all I ever do is fight. I fight in my preaching. I'm always taking a stand against something, or something that's wrong, or something that's hurting young people, something that's destroying families. And Lord, I wish I could just be a nice preacher. I wish I could just be a positive preacher. And I got to reading about what uh, uh, Paul, uh, how he summarized his life as he wrote uh, his final letters from the uh, prison there in Rome. And he summarized his life by saying, I have fought a good fight. Uh, He didn't say I won every battle, but he said I fought a good fight. And his life uh, day after day, week after week, and throughout the years was a battle against uh, uh, the uh, devil and evil. 
When David, uh, I'm sorry, when Timothy was commissioned of Paul, uh, Paul told Timothy, he said, I want you to war a good warfare. He said, be a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Now, I want to tell you tonight, battles are going to come. And that leads me to the most important part of the message where the Bible says, and when David inquired of the Lord. Now, folks, I want you to think about this. David in 2 Samuel chapter 5 is no longer that young teenager that came to fight against the giant. Uh, he is no longer that young man uh, that is inexperienced in war, uh, but David is now an experienced uh, warrior. Uh, David has led his mighty men. And they've defeated the Philistines and anyone else that got in their way, and they've done so in a grand fashion. In this passage of Scripture, though, the Bible tells us why David succeeded, how David succeeded. And here it is, don't miss it, David inquired of the Lord. Didn't matter how many times he'd fought and defeated the Philistines, he prepared the same way every time. And here's what's interesting. This time, God told him something different than every other time. I want you to think about that. I want you to think about how God won battles and how God won victories and how his people, how we have won battles uh, in the arm and the, and the strength and the power and the might uh, of, the, of the Lord. Here's how he did it. It wasn't in a plan. It wasn't in a procedure, but it was in the person of God. God never won two battles alike because he wanted our trust not to be in a plan, not to be in a procedure, but he wanted our trust to be in the person of the living God. So here this time he said, here's David, I want, here's uh, uh, what I want you to do, David. I want you to fetch a compass. <laughs> I like that phrase. And uh, he said, I want you to find out where the Philistines are uh, preparing to engage in battle. And uh, when you find that out... <coughs> He said, I want you to go behind them. I want you to get behind them and uh, get in the mulberry trees. Uh, get down low where they don't know where you are. And as the Philistines are facing in this direction, I want you to go in behind them and you're going to attack them from the rear. Now here's what I want you to do. And oh, don't miss this very important part of the message. I want you to get in the mulberry trees with your men. And I want you to wait for a going. I want you to wait for a wind to blow. I want you to wait for a stirring among the mulberry trees. And when you see those leaves begin to blow, when you see those leaves begin to turn up, you'll know that I'm there with you. And you'll go forward in battle, and I'll fight the battle with you. I'll fight the battle for you. The Bible says in verse number 25, And David did so, <coughs> excuse me, and David did so as the Lord had commanded him, and smote the Philistines from Geba until thou come to Gazer. He said from one place to the next, he didn't just stop them where they were, he chased them, he followed them, and he defeated every last one in that battle that day. Now how did he win? Did he win because of his plan? No, he had one, but he didn't win because of that plan. Did, did he win because of the procedure? No, he didn't win because of, uh, of the procedure. How did he win? He won because he waited on the Lord. Now this word wait. I hear a lot of folks say when I talk to them about the will of God, you understand uh, that uh, my life is consumed in, in uh, not only uh, loving and serving the church here that I serve and uh, preach to every Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night in council uh, hours and hours uh, day after day and the folks I love, but it's consumed in helping young men to prepare for ministry and planting churches across America. And I want to help and encourage these young men. Oftentimes, I'll talk to someone about the will of God, and they say, well, we're waiting on uh, this, or we're waiting on that, that circumstance. Now, friend, sometimes that word wait becomes an excuse because it is a Bible word, but oftentimes we use it as an excuse to say, I'm not ready, I don't feel like it, the circumstances aren't right. But when the Lord Jesus said, and when the God of heaven said to wait on him, he didn't mean to sit in a lazy chair on easy street, he meant to wait with an expectation to expect him to come because we have called on him. The Bible says here, and David inquired of the Lord. David said, God, how do you want me to fight against the Philistines? What do you want me to do? 
God said, David, go to the mulberry trees. He said, fetch a compass. Don't forget that. He said, fetch a compass and go in behind them. And he said, when there becomes a moving of the mulberry trees, of the mulberry leaves, you'll know I'm there. I want you to go and I want you to wait on me there. Now, the word wait, the word wait, what does it mean? Here it means wait with an expectation. They didn't go set up their tents and camp out for six months and smoke meat and have big time. Uh, no, sir. They were there prepared for battle, ready for battle, waiting for God to come, waiting for the power and the presence of God to come and help them. Many times in life and ministry, I've been a part of, of, of various uh, emergency-type events. I, I've been called to homes before. I was called to a home uh, just a few months ago, and, and uh, mother was very concerned for a daughter. And uh, I spoke to the daughter, and I said, what's the problem? And they said, I just, I, I, I just can't breathe. And I said, we need to call 911. We need to get you an ambulance. We need to get you to the doctor. And she said, I really, I really don't, don't, don't want to go. And I said, I understand that, but I believe, I believe we need to call them, and we need to get you to the hospital. So I took my phone, and I dialed those three numbers, 911. They answered quickly. I said, I am here at, and I gave them the address, and I have a lady that having a hard time breathing, and this was during the months of COVID, and there was a great concern, of course, in those days, and, very, and, very, and, and, and a reason to be. And, uh, uh, and, and they said, what's the address? And, and if you'll stay on the phone, I have already dispatched an ambulance there on the way can I get the information as much as I can? They asked me the name of the person, the approximate age of the person, uh, the approximate symptoms of the person. In fact, they, they were very calming because they were on the way. Now, when, when I called them, I didn't go sit in the recliner and say, I think I'll take a nap till they get here. No, they said, I'm on the way. And so I went outside and I waited. I heard the siren before I saw the truck. I heard the siren, the ambulance was on the way. What a relief it was to know they were coming and the help was on the way. Hey, friend, when God said to David, I want you to wait on me, dear friend, he didn't mean I'll be there in six months. He didn't mean I'll be there and you can sit in the recliner and take a nap. I'll wake you up when I get there. He said, I want you to get ready for victory. I want you to get ready to win and I'll soon be there. And that's what the Bible says to wait on the Lord. The battles are coming, but the victory is ours so long as we inquire of the Lord. I appreciate so much you watching the program tonight. I trust this truth was a blessing to you. Let me know if it's been a blessing. Send me a message this week if you have the opportunity by way of Messenger or Facebook in some way in that manner. But may the Lord bless you and enjoy this good song as we go off the air tonight. heard a story of a saint and old mother who had lived out her life here on earth as she lay on her deathbed her friends gathered round her and these were the last words she said oh look what i'm training for a mansion oh look what i'm leaving behind oh look who will be there to greet me Step in God's sweet paradise I'm leaving behind all my sorrow I'm leaving behind all my care For a train in and all for a mansion That Jesus has gone to But she still had a smile on her face She said, I hear singing, all oh, they're waiting for me Then she looked up to heaven 